So let's move on. Let's start talking about this, why, how this actually looks and, and uh, uh, getting customers into this, and why this is important. Number one, physical, sat down at the dinner table, quiet location, no distractions, paper and pen out ready to take notes. We do a, a, a sales strategy at Virtual Solo Club, the self-proposal method. I think it is the most easy, straightforward, high closing percentage uh, solar sales method in, in the entire bloody industry. Pen and paper is very, very, very important for that customer having that and both spouses together. What does that not look like? John sat down, but Mary's off doing chores or dishes. Okay, hey guys, how you doing? Yeah, uh, so is Mary there as well? Oh yeah, she can hear you. She's just you know doing the dishes right now. She's just taking care of the kids. Not a good sales environment, not a good closable environment there. Let's be real. If you've been in this game long enough, sales or solar, I don't care where you've been. If you've been in sales, you know that if the wife is distracted, if the husband is distracted, and you sell one, you sell the bee's knees of your product, uh, bee's knees off your product to one spouse, but the other spouse is distracted and was sort of flying the wall, what are they going to do the last second when you go for the close? Oh, hey, tell them we'll think about it. Oh, honey, we'll think about it. I, I got a buddy. I'll, I'll ask him as well. They weren't in that process, in that sales process. They, they have misunderstandings that you weren't able to match. So both spouses sat down in the sales environment that we're creating. Communication medium, phone closing only. No Zoom, no text, no email. This should be, you know, you don't close deals over text and email. You maybe get appointments, maybe you get leads, but you don't close it. It's not a great environment. And again, I not a fan of video conferencing closing. We've done so many A-B testing showing that phone has drastically higher close rates and, and results than uh, going video conferencing or Zoom. Maximize bandwidth and control while minimizing distractions. That is your uh, notes on Medium. Now let's talk about engagement. So when we talk about a sales environment, we're not just talking about physical. We know now what a physical environment looks like, sat down at a table with pen and paper. We know what that looks like right but we also need the customer to be in a certain mental state They're, they have to have a have to have initially and maintain a certain level of engagement for the entire process to maximize that uh, closing potential so when you have them sat down at that table you know maybe you built a bit of rapport first in your clothes don't worry about that the first few minutes whatever you, they don't have to be sat down anymore they can be doing whatever they want build rapport ha -ha, some laughs tell them a story or two but when you start getting into it, or rather before you start getting into it, there has to be a barrier and it has to be, okay, can you do this for me? Sat down at the table, grab Mary as well, put me on speaker, grab your pen and paper, okay. Physical location checked, you confirmed with them, okay, yeah, we're, we're both sat down, you're on speaker, we can both hear you. Fantastic, awesome. Physically, we're good to go now. We're gonna wrap that up by just saying, Awesome, hey, yeah, fantastic, just keep me on speaker, uh, give me the next 20 minutes of engagement here and we'll really take a look at this properly, okay? They say yes, yes, okay, physical location confirmed. They're both gonna sit, sit down, phone's gonna remain on speaker. I hear Mary say, yep, I'm ready to go. John says, yep, I'm ready to go. Physical location, sweet. Now, let's talk about the level of engagement, where they are mentally throughout the beginning and throughout that entire close. One big uh, mistake that I see a lot of people doing with phones, with high ticket uh, sales is they will engage one spouse at the beginning. They'll even confirm the other spouse is ready to go. So let's say, awesome, Mary, you sat down. John, you're sat down as well. Okay, phone's on, uh, on a speaker, fantastic. And that's the last time that they engage that one spouse. And that's the last time they do a, a sales environment check, an engagement check. And then it starts getting a, a away from them. So they don't make a deal with the customer saying, hey, cool, so you guys are gonna be uh, engaged. I'm, I got both of you. Good to go for the next few minutes here? They say yes. They might even do that, but then five minutes later, the only person they've been speaking with is John. And usually there's always one spouse that's a bit more vocal, right? Generally, there's always one spouse that's a bit more vocal. Sometimes the wife, sometimes the husband, it's, it's whoever. And the other one is, yeah, maybe questions here or there, but they're all often to the side. And here is what I call the fly on the wall phenomenon, I guess you call it. The fly on the wall phenomenon. The fly on the wall phenomenon says that one spouse is going to engage and the other spouse is gonna start drifting off. And they're not going to feel that they're, that they're engaged, that you have, they have a relationship with you, they have communication with you, or that they even need to be there and be answering your questions. That is a dangerous, dangerous space to be in. So let's say uh, 
you speak with John on your appointment setting call or whoever booked the appointment speaks with John and John picks up the phone and John's super engaged, John's asking questions, but, and, and so you've never spoken to Mary before. You speak to Mary initially, but then what happens is you speak to her once and then five, 10 minutes later, you haven't called her by name. You haven't asked her a question. She has had no channel to, uh, to communicate with you on. And so she just starts fading. She either starts fading mentally, physically, she starts looking to things to do, and she becomes a fly on the wall. And like I mentioned before, you do not want a fly on the wall. At the end of your close, when you go to John and say, John, awesome, so $200, let's get this done right now. And John says, yeah, that sounds pretty good. Mary is going to say, hey, honey, let's just, let's just think about it. Now, is she saying that because she really wants to think about it? Generally, no, she's saying that because 70, 80% of what you said, she hasn't even heard. And so she's not engaged. She doesn't see the value. There, there, that is not an engage. You haven't pitched Mary yet. You've only pitched John. So how do we do that? Get them in every five minutes. Call them both by name. Mary, you still with me there? I haven't heard much from you recently. Oh yeah, I'm still here. Awesome. Hey John, everything making sense so far? John says, yeah, uh, uh, everything's making sense so far. Fantastic. Awesome. Beautiful. Let's keep going. And what you're doing there is you're setting a standard that at any point in time you could call in Mary's name. At any point in time you could ask John if he understands and so they stay locked in because they feel they're a part of this. They feel it's a conversation. They don't think you're just speaking to one of them and so the other one can go off and do something random. They feel like they're engaged. Names, not, hey guys, does this make sense? Hey, do you guys understand? No, it's, hey John, everything making sense so far? Are you still with me? Fantastic. Hey, Mary, you've been a bit quiet the past few minutes. Can I help you with anything? Every five minutes, you gotta keep them engaged. Okay? Um, secondly, dead spots. I don't like dead spots. This happens a lot with document signing. This happens a lot with, I don't know, um, you, like maybe you're going through the numbers or you're looking at their electricity bill, right? And, uh, you're, and you say, awesome. Hey, guys, just give me one second. I'm just opening up the, the elec your electricity bill here to take a look. And they just go quiet. I, it's so awkward when I hear this. The reason why I hear this is because physically, if I was in front of you and I said, oh, yeah, we'll just wait one sec, mate. Let's get your utility bill. I am conscious that they can see me. And so it's not awkward because I know that this person can see me look for it. That doesn't exist over the phones. So you say, oh, yeah, one sec, I'm going to do this. And then you go quiet for 30 seconds. On the other end, they're probably like, okay, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. 45 seconds, what the hell, where is this guy? And the worst, the worst is when maybe you're asking for some like personal information, maybe you're deciding which financing option to use. Hey guys, roughly, what, when was your credit score last time you checked? Um, uh, hey guys, what, what's the income looking like right now? Oh yeah, it's this. They gave you some personal information. I've heard it so much, and, and then it's just quiet, it's just dead, as maybe you're like sh sifting through and be like, okay, maybe I should do this, because you, think that they can see you because you're not used to doing phone sales where you can't see it. So you think the customer can see you subconsciously look through stuff on your computer and so it's okay. But actually, what it actually seems like to the customer is, hey, so John, how much money do you make a year? Oh, uh, yeah, about $55,000. Silence. <laughs> so awkward. And then engagement is, is, oh my, it just kills the engagement. It freaks customers out. I hate it. I can't, it's, it's cringe. It's so physically cringe when I hear that. You got to be aware that the customers cannot see you. And so telling them, speaking with them while you're doing stuff, you could be like doing a redesign because they told you they need this or looking at which finance provider to shoot them through so they can get approvals. Oh, no worries, guys. Let me just look through this. Take a few seconds. Uh, by the way, you guys mentioned you did this, right? Yeah, no, I used to do that as well, it was interesting. And you get used to that multitasking, right? So you're speaking to your customer like with 20% of your brain while the rest is like, shit, I gotta do a redesign, I gotta, I gotta get this paperwork, I, you know, I gotta do something. But you're speaking to them, you're minimizing those gaps of radio silence. Please don't have those dead zones, it is so awkward, it kills the engagement, it is absolutely wild, I hate it. Uh, zone outs and dead spots. Okay, let's talk about our audience. Um, Sales environment. We're talking about setting up that sales environment to have the highest probability of close. Let's do a summary. We've talked about physical environment, sitting down at a dining table, 
They're out and about, they're driving, reschedule it. They're doing the gardening, very not, uh, uh, calmly ask them after you built some rapport, hey, fantastic. Hey, do you guys have a big dining table? Do you mind just grabbing a pen and paper out for me and sitting down, putting me on speaker and grabbing Mary as well? Just let me know when you guys are, are ready to go. Just uh, calmly ask, nice and authoritatively, sit down, give me your engagement. Uh, you know, you got Mary and John, pen and paper. You confirm, you set the standard. Awesome, guys, do I have your attention for the next few minutes here? Fantastic. Mary, by the way, how's your day going? Ask, uh, call them both by name, keep them engaged. Our physical is good, our uh, uh, mental is good. I'm engaging with them by name every single uh, five minutes, making sure they're still both locked in and one of them hasn't gone and randomly uh, walked off and gone, uh, bought groceries or something. Secondly, we need to make sure that we have both spouses. Now, this is a really basic thing in sales, but maybe some of you out there have no experience or you, you've never heard this before, so I'm just gonna tell you this because it's a big important piece for a good sales environment. If you have um, uh, two parties, two uh, spouses, and one of them is there and one of them is not, wife is there, husband is not, husband is there, wife is not, pitching one of them is the easiest way ever to not get a close. Single parties do not close. 1% of the time, maybe, but we do not build strategies and habits for the 1%, we build them for the 99. Single parties do not close right? Husband is there, wife is not there, do not pitch him. Wait for the wife to come back and or reschedule that. Wife is there, husband is not there. She says, no worries, I, I'll make the decision anyway. Just let me know what's going on. Nope, absolutely not. We're rescheduling that. Come up with some justification to do so. A good one is, hey, we need to ask you both about your energy usage habits. This is a, a, a full uh, a, you know, energy uh, rehaul here. We can't just half-ass it. We got to do it once. We got to do it properly, right? That's what we want to do, right, Mary? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Okay, fair enough. Is he coming back anytime soon? No worries. Look, I'm going to open up my schedule same time tomorrow because I saw you guys' $350 power bill and I, we really need to solve that for you. So I'm happy to do that. If, Mary, you can just guarantee we can get uh, John Satt down to the table, um, a line I always used to use is, grab those pink fuzzy handcuffs in your closet, handcuff John to the table and get him to sit down and say, hey, our power bill's too high, we need to take a look at what we can do here. Can we? Can you do that for me, Mary? Oh, okay, fair enough, okay, fantastic. I'll call you guys back tomorrow and we'll really try to take a, a good swing at this, all right? Fantastic, boom, reschedule. But you do not pitch her. You don't end the call immediately, you have a good conversation with you, you dangle the carrot, you get them hyped up about the problem, but you reschedule that. You do not pitch a single party ever. I don't care what they tell you, if they can make decisions by themselves, you do not do it. Absolutely do not do it. You reschedule. 